In this video, we are walking through the pathophysiology of coronary artery disease, and I will lay it out for you in four simple steps so that you can understand it easier and faster and pass your nursing school exams. Let's dive in. Now, I am so excited to start doing this pathophysiology series for you here on YouTube. So if you love this video, if you love this series, write love in the comments below. We used to do this on our older videos and it was so fun and I love seeing all your comments. So write love in the comments below if you like this patho video and if you want to see more patho videos or med surge videos on our channel. So in a nutshell, coronary artery disease or CAD is when the arteries that supply the heart itself with blood flow to oxygenate and provide nutrients to the heart heart muscle itself, they're not letting enough blood flow through, which can lead to ischemia. So essentially, since the heart is a muscle, it needs its own blood supply to deliver oxygen and nutrients to it so that it can keep working and keep pumping the blood and then oxygenating the rest of the body. When it isn't getting enough blood flow and the heart itself gets ischemic, it won't be able to pump as efficiently or effectively. Now, CAD can happen with anything that occludes blood flow, but it's most common caused by atherosclerosis. This is where plaques build up along the blood vessel walls and decrease or cut off blood flow altogether to those tissues. So in this case, the muscle tissue is in the heart itself. So let's walk through what happens with coronary artery disease. We'll break it down step by step. This is exactly how we teach the pathophysiology inside the nursing SOS membership community as well for all our patho videos. I always love to break down difficult topics for you into simple step-by-step -step processes so that you can follow it. I just think it's such an easier way to learn things and remember things. So if you want more patho videos like this, be sure to check out the hundreds of step-by-step -step nursing lectures that we have for you inside the nursing SOS membership community. So let's dive into the steps of CAD pathophysiology. Step number one, there is a gradual narrowing of the blood vessel. In cases like atherosclerosis, this process can take years where the blood vessels slowly become occluded with plaque buildup. And over time, the blood just can't flow through the blood vessels as easily. This leads to step number two, where there starts to be a decrease in blood flow. So there are two main arteries that provide blood flow to the heart, and they both come directly off the aorta. The right coronary artery supplies the right side of the heart. There are two smaller arteries that come off that right artery as well, the right marginal artery and posterior descending artery. Then the left coronary artery which supplies the left side of the heart. Then there are those two coming off the left artery too, the left circumflex artery which mainly oxygenates the left atrium and the left anterior descending artery which mainly supplies the left ventricle. So any decrease in blood flow caused by plaque buildup in any of those vessels would impact how the heart functions. Now we know that anything that is going to decrease blood flow is usually not a good thing, right? And especially in this case, when the decrease in blood flow is to the heart muscle specifically. So this leads us to step number three of the pathophysiology of CAD, where there's reduced blood flow or ischemia. Now, all tissues and muscles need blood to function, right? Because blood delivers oxygen and nutrients to those tissues. But when the blood flow is cut off, the muscles won't be able to function like they normally would. This is where you start to see that ischemia, which is a lack of blood flow to the tissues. In this case, the specific muscle and tissue is the heart. So in step number three of the pathophysiology of coronary artery disease, there is less blood going to the heart tissue, which is called ischemia. So now that we know more about how that decrease in blood flow can happen and how it would impact the heart, now let's dive in to how those plaques are formed so that we can be sure we understand what is happening now in these vessels in step number four. So the blood that is pumped through arteries, it's rich in oxygen and nutrients to help support the tissues and the muscles of the body, right? One of these nutrients is fat, or more specifically, low-density lipoproteins, LDLs. You've probably heard of LDL cholesterol before because it's the bad one. It's the bad cholesterol, the one you don't want too much of. Now, here's why. As the blood is passing through the arteries, 
the lipoproteins, those LDLs, they start to stick. They initially stick to the artery wall. This causes a mild inflammatory response, which makes the lining of the vessel even more sticky. And then over time, as more blood and lipoproteins start to flow through there, they start to clump together and really stick to each other. As they clump together, they start to calcify and harden. Now this all builds, builds on itself and you can end up with major narrowing of the artery because of essentially a buildup and hardening of these lipoproteins or fats. Think of it this way, if you tried to blow through a straw and you put honey in that straw, it would stick to the edges, making the actual straw super hard to blow through. This is the same concept. The vessels, they become very narrow, making it hard to pump the blood through them. and supply the heart with those nutrients in the oxygen that it needs to keep working and keep functioning effectively. So here in step number four, that narrowing, it continues to get worse and worse until possibly the blood vessel becomes completely blocked. And this is when a heart attack or myocardial infarction can happen. The blood vessel becomes blocked, so no blood flow can actually get through that vessel. Now the key difference to remember here, because of the pathophysiology of coronary artery disease and a myocardial infarction or a heart attack, the key difference here is that coronary artery disease disease is where the blood vessels have a buildup of plaque and it's more difficult for the blood to get through leading to ischemia. Now myocardial infarction happens when that blood vessel becomes completely blocked and no blood can get through at all. So whatever part of the heart that blood vessel was supplying with blood, there's no blood going there anymore, which then leads to a myocardial infarction. Now you're probably wondering how to keep everything straight in med surge when you've got lecture classes and clinicals and skills lab and endless studying. So in this video, I'm gonna give you my top tips for passing med surge and go become the nurse that God created only you to be. And I will see you in the next video.